so this is the next project. I've got the crawl in a state where I'm pretty happy with it. It's sort of just mechanically sound, it's looking reasonably well. So I'm just driving it around and enjoying it, taking it to a few shows and all that. And the next project is this lovely thing. I've had it, I think about seven years and it's sort of over that time been on and off the road. It was about eight years ago and I would have been 16 and Key to the City came out. Mighty Car Mod Special and it just completely blew my mind. I hadn't, you know, at that time I had no idea what a K car was, I had no idea if these tiny turbo toasters existed. Um, and just watching that film, seeing all the cars, seeing them flying about Japan in a wee mirror, it just got me totally obsessed. I spent hours and hours every day searching Japanese auction sites, Gumtree, eBay, everything. Just, I wanted one of these so badly. I love the fact that they're so small, so light, and they've got that, you know, they've got a turbo engine that just makes them so much fun. It's got that really just mad power delivery where all the power just comes in suddenly, and they make just all sorts of sounds. Um, so, yeah, from, from the moment I saw Key to the City, I was obsessed. I think back then I watched Key to the City maybe, probably 10 or 15 times. It was ridiculous. And like, uh, it definitely, it, it got me just hooked on all these wee tiny Japanese cars. That's why we've got the Copen. And I've had, over the years, I had a Honda Beat as well. Um, but this one's, this one stuck with me. Um, Last time it was on the road was about four years ago. Initially, when I had it running, I was, again, I was 16. I had no idea what I was doing. It was the first time I'd properly worked on a car. Um, I'd done bits and pieces before that, but nothing, nothing major. Um, and I'd, I'd seen just how much tuning was available when you had a turbo engine, you know, just being, I think it was in, turbos and temples that Mighty Car Mods did. You know, you saw them putting the boost controller and all on their Suzuki Alto. So I thought, just, you know, you can, you can do quite a lot to turbo cars to really make them quick. So I tried putting a boost controller on this and making it go a wee bit better. And we're taking it to drag strips and everything. I think at one point the boost controller failed. Now this would have been 2015, 2016. Um, the boost controller failed. And I think it boosted up to like 35 PSI <laughs> and just blew the head gasket clean out of the car. So in the Civic versus 31 in the 660 CC. Um, so that took it off, it, it wasn't running after that, I sort of, I knew the damage that could come from having a blown head gasket, it never overheated, it just blew the head gasket out of it, mixed coolant and all that. Um, so I took the engine out, fully rebuilt it, everything, you know, uh, piston rings, bearings, head gasket, well, all the gaskets, um, head skimmed, all of that, and got it back together. And it was running really well. I was driving it every day on the road, but something wasn't right with the fueling. I kept having to change the oil like every 200 miles. Just not oiling up the engine anymore, it becomes so thin. I put a wideband gauge on it to see is it just dumping fuel in. It wasn't too bad cruising around, but as soon as you got on boost, it would go to like seven to one air fuel ratio, which on a turbo car, 
the richest you wanted to go was maybe 10. Naturally aspirated, maybe 12 and a half. Obviously, I'm not a professional tuner, so these are very rough, but seven is extremely rich. Um, so, but I kind of just ran with it for a while because it was my everyday car, I needed to keep driving. And then it started to develop um, like bottom end knock from the bearings getting worn out. They were fresh bearings when I put them in, but just having essentially no oil in it. It was just like petrol filled oil. It just, yeah, completely ruined the bearings. I assume, I haven't actually dug into the engine. What then happened, it was the nail in the coffin because I was planning on getting it fixed and getting it all sorted. I got a speeding ticket in this car for doing 50 in a 30 because, well, this is one of those cars that when you get on it, it just wants you to go and go and go and it revs so high and it makes so much power with the turbo that you just end up, yeah, maybe, maybe going a wee bit too quickly. Um, so I got a speeding ticket and at that point I put so much work into the car and it just cost me more and more and more money. And then it cost me a speeding ticket, my insurance went up. I'd obviously pay the fine. I got points on my license, all that. And I was just like, I don't want to see this car. I don't want to drive it, nothing. So it got parked back in, I think it was August, 2018. And that's where it's sat ever since. I'm ashamed to admit, unfortunately, it's growing moss and algae and it's a home to many spiders. But I've decided, now that I've got my everyday car, the Corolla sorted, I'm gonna finally tackle this. I've, it, it deserves to be properly looked after, so I think I'm gonna get it MOT'd again and get it back on the road. I need to figure out what's going on with the engine, whether I just need to swap the bearings and it's good. I don't know whether the, um, the walls of the cylinders are gone and it might need like, I don't know, bored or honed or something to make the piston ring seal better so petrol can't get through. Because um, maybe when I rebuilt the engine, I hadn't honed it or I should have honed it. Maybe the cylinders weren't right. Maybe the piston ring should have been oversized. You know, it was one of the first engines I'd ever built. So I don't really, I didn't really know what I was doing. Still don't really know what I'm doing. So it, that could be why it's probably a mixture of a few things. I'm considering putting a different engine in it. At the minute, it's got the standard 660cc three-cylinder single cam. It's an EFJL engine, turbocharged 12-valve with the single cam, but the block is the same as the EFRL and also the EJ engines. The EJ engines were the ones that were used in the like European delivered and Australian delivered uh, CRs and the EJV was in the later on European and Australian charades and um, obviously they were all mirrors but for the export markets they all got the one litre bit more power um, and because the engine architecture is the same you can actually swap the turbo single cam head onto the one litre block and obviously you know, you're, sp you're spinning up the turbo a bit quicker because you have a bit more displacement, a bit more air flying through. So it's, it can actually bump the power up quite well. And because it's for export markets here, those engines aren't readily available, but you'll never find the 660 engine. You'd have to import it from Japan. So the one liter ones, you can actually get them. So that's the route I'm thinking about going. So we'll have a bit more displacement, a bit more power, and we'll be able to get spare parts. I think the bottom end of those one liters is quite strong. I know the top end was more known for going. So with the top end of the turbo, we should be pretty good. Um, I've got a, a metal head gasket to go on one of the multi-layered ones. That's a bit thicker than the standard, as far as I know. So it should reduce the compression because obviously the 
one liter non-turbo engines had slightly higher compression. So that's a current plan. Um, I've also got ARP head studs to go on just to, you know, keep the gasket in place, try and stop any leaks, any blow through, or sorry, any blow by, anything like that. Just really clamp the head down. Other than that, the engine should be okay. I had the turbo rebuilt and hybrid back when the engine was rebuilt the first time. The turbo should be sweet, everything else should be sweet. With the fueling, I'm gonna have to play it by ear and just see. I'm hoping just with the extra air that we're getting in out of a one liter, it'll lean out the mixture slightly and I'll monitor it and we'll check, you know, does the mixture get back into a normal sort of range? With that, if it does, brilliant. We can just drive it and enjoy it. If it doesn't, I might put an aftermarket fuel pressure regulator on to basically just turn the fuel pressure down just ever so slightly, just so it's when you're on full power, the fuel, the air fuel ratios are something reasonable. If that doesn't work, we'll have to go with a standalone ECU. Now, I'd like to do that anyway because I want to learn installing standalone ECUs, do a bit of tuning. Maybe we'll be able to figure out something, rent a rolling road to get this thing properly tuned on. Be a good learning. I thought a good way to learn how to tune cars, especially if we have the one liter in it, because it means when I inevitably blow the engine again, we'll be able to get another one relatively inexpensively and locally. I have a feeling I'm probably just going to hoard like three or four of these engines because I just seem to blow them up. But it's nothing against the engine. From what I've seen, the guys in Malaysia and all, these are strong engines and they can take quite a bit of punch. Um, I know guys over there have 250 horsepower out of, a one, out of the one litre engines, which is just ridiculous. Especially in these cars, they only weigh about 600 kilos. Um, so, that's, that, that'll probably be eventually, I think I'll probably put a standalone ECU in regardless. But for right now, I'd just like to get it back on the road and enjoy it. And if we can make a bit more power, that sort of thing, excellent. So, first things first, no battery in the car, I've just bought a new one. We'll get it started and we'll sort of get an idea of what's wrong with it and what needs doing. Oh. Yeah, you can see I've got the original mats for it. The seats and all are the full Avanzado kit, which look class. To me, these seats almost look like, I don't know, Mini R34 seats or something like that. It's only got about 80,000 kilometers on it. It was never swapped to miles. So that's about 50,000 miles. Oh, it still smells as it did when I first got it. But yeah, it's a tiny, tiny thing. Like, I could barely fit into it. Yeah, you can see I've got my Innovate wide band and my boost gauge. Fixed penalty. <laughs> you can tell why I wanted to get rid of this thing. You can see. It's got the original flare from Japan. I wonder if those have, those have a date on it. 2005. I think that was when it was exported from Japan. I've got the original owner's manual and all in there. Although I don't think that was that wasn't the one that came with the car. That was just what I ordered. But yeah. I love everything about it, the new body kit. The wheels. We hood scoop off. And the fact that you can see the hood scoop when you're driving. You can see it's not looking too good in here. I've um, got the turbo down there. It's absolutely minuscule. God, it's looking quite rusty. I think that hood scoop sort of drips down 
onto all this, but sure, it should be all right inside. But the original intake and all, uh, the exhaust is not original at all. I've got a wee gritty Type S blow off valve. As far as I know, this is the one they used for the sound on the Fast and Furious movies. So it really gives off such a fun sound and it makes it so cool when you're just driving about. Um, get your tiny intercooler here that's fed by that wee scoop. Let's see, do we still have oil? I'm it. Yeah, well, yeah, it smells quite fuely, the oil, as expected. But yeah, with no battery, so I'm going to stop here and get a battery into it and see if we can get it started. Let's see, put the new battery in. Oh, oh, we have some form of life. Oh, we've got lights. <laughs> oh, straight away. Easy. I haven't, I haven't tried to start this thing yet. That's just the first time. Yeah, you can hear it's very, very picky. All the spiders going there. Yeah, there's a lot of noise coming from the same. So, I'm there. Now I've got a bit of room to move back here. Yeah, not great, I really need to move the arse of it over there. So I might jack it up even. Oh shit. So, sit rep. I was able to get the front end around. And it all looked fine. I'm here now, I think, you know, as this comes around, that will be able to go back. Might need to shimmy it a wee bit. And I'm all right here. But, the problem is, under there. Oh no. That's not good. It's so close. What I'm kind of hoping is oops, these tires are really soft. I'm hoping if I pump these up, it'll give me just just, just enough to get over them. So I'll get the air compressor out now. Sure, with loads of room there. Excellent. I might even cut the wheel the other way and come forward a wee bit. Just to try and give me a wee bit more room. Oh, right, 
So I want to try and dig a bit more into what is going on with this engine just to try and inform the decision of what we should do going forward. I've got myself a tasty beverage. So we could hear it was ticking. You could see from the back bits of smoke and all coming out. Not ideal. But the first thing I'm going to do is give it a compression test. Oil looks okay, coolant looks okay in terms of just the colour of it. But I want to see what the compression is like. I don't think we've a blown head gasket or anything like that. But I do, I think the bearings are gone on it. But I want to know if there's any more, because if it's just bearings, that's not the worst thing in the world to fix. But if there's something more, I will want to know. Now, because obviously, if I just go through and do bearings and it turns out to be more, I won't be too happy. So, first things first, compression test. I've got my compression test kit, spark plug wrenches, and I'm just going to pull all the spark plugs out, just so the engine can turn over a bit freer. That spark plug is actually looking really rusty. Might need to get a new one of those again. I think it's rain just dripping in here. You can see the bonnet's a bit flaky right there. So I might need to take a look at that. Because we do not want that happening. Even if I've seen some of the guys in Japan make like a stainless steel plate that sits like that, that will also help with cooling and that kind of thing, so maybe we can mix them up. Hello. Fuck me, not that. I mean, like I should have known that. Yeah. That doesn't look good. Ooh, hot, 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 hot. Yeah, the engine was just running. It kind of makes sense. Oh, it looks like it's just maybe surface rust because it is coming off pretty good. That one again looks much the same. Fuck. Oh, some gloves would be nice. <laughs> I'm sure my spark plug gaps are good now. I had a dirt. Right. The one thing I never understood about compression test kits is you never actually like properly torque it down so I wonder how much is able to leak out through the threads because I think I'm just twisting it in here. I can't figure out any way you would be able to like actually torque it up or anything. So this is cylinder number one. When I do this, I am going to stick my foot in the pedal and go full throttle. Um, just because the way I think about it, if you're trying to draw, if you're drawing a vacuum into the cylinder, you know, because the throttle's closed, it won't give an accurate reading. You really need to have the throttle wide open so you're getting natural air pressure in. Put that in gear. So that's a hundred PSI. I'm trying to think. So I don't know what compression ratio for this engine is supposed to be. The way I see it is it's making what if I expect an engine of this age turbocharged to make eight nine to one compression ratio. And I assume that's eight to nine of natural air pressure. 
So that would be, so natural air pressure is what, 14 PSI? 14 times eight is 120. So that's about 100, 105. So that wouldn't be 110. So I think, I think that, to me that sounds reasonable. I think I'm for that, um, for this engine, I think 100 PSI, especially when you consider it hasn't been run for a while. I don't think that's too bad. That was the almost exact same, 110. So that's good as well. Holy shit. That one's up at 140. So maybe that's what they should all be. Don't know. That one seems a lot higher than the rest. Hmm. Well, I think, to be honest, any it may just take more time for the cylinders to get, you know, if they've got any rust or anything like that on them. But I think those sort of numbers aren't too bad. Maybe we can get away with just doing bearings on it. You can see just how black that is. So you can tell that's been run rich when it's that black on the end. I wonder if we do just swap the bearings, drop the oil, fill it up with some, some decent oil and just run it and see what happens. Because it's sort of like at that point, the engine goes, fair enough. I know there's a few other things the car needs. I know last time I drove it, the brakes weren't great on it. And now with age, they've just rusted. So I did pick up some brand new calipers, well, brand new refurbished calipers. So I'll get some disc pads and then probably give the system a whole flush and then take it for its MOT. I wonder if we can get a wee look under there and see what exactly is in the way if we were to do the bearings in situ. Obviously, you would normally want to pull the engine out, but if we're just doing bearings, it seems a wee bit OTT. a bit of a leak under here. See this cross member would very much get in the way of trying to do that. But it looks like it can unbolt or bump. Looks like you can unbolt that. I mean it wouldn't be too bad at all. I might see about getting some bearings. And just run it for now. Obviously, down the road, look at a one liter and redo it. But I think we should be sweet. Mm -hmm. 